Morning gang, trash man here, trash is treasures where old things get a second chance. It's a little chilly Sunday morning, we got a little light dusting of snow out there. Um, for those of you who are following along on the Facebook side of things, I uh, posted some pictures, at least got the nightstand and the two dressers finished. Now onto that bed and uh, a lot of interesting things, a lot of things going and uh, Figured I'd show you a few pieces and uh, just uh, went and picked up some more stuff yesterday. Picked up, uh, I'll show you here, I'm going to flip this, put, put a light on. And I hope they won't make you too seasick around here. Eh? Get some rain going. I, uh, the bed, this is the headboard for that antique bedroom set. It's got some deep gouges and stuff, but all in all, it's in pretty decent shape. The footboard is one of the fancy curved ones. It's not in as good a shape. I've got some more of an ear to peel and uh, a little repair to do on it. And the bed rails are in way worse shape. Uh, I actually have a couple sets of antique bed rails and neither one of them. So I'm going to have to build from scratch a couple of bed rails. But the uh, molds that I talked about the other day and uh, yesterday, because I needed some more of uh, some Dixie Bell and the Navy and uh, Fluff, which is the white and blue. And for those of you that are on the YouTube side of things, uh, this are the dressers. It's the tall one, the nightstand, there's the poor top. And get a better look at things here with the, the video side of the stuff. We did some more neat pieces and to make some pieces and uh, Vanessa's idea to go with the, the gold on there because I was going to put a little gold with the blue and white and the poor tops anyway. Uh, went with a satin finish so it's uh, not dull but not in your face glossy. I figure it suits better. Uh, this is the mirror frame for uh, the big dresser back there and that's a big man in the mirror is the old oh, it's antique so it's really thick it's all I can do to pick it up when the glass itself is on it so I have that to paint <clears throat> bed rails to make headboard to get ready and a footboard to do some work now uh, those that had great interest in me making molds and stuff and since I had to go to Boswick Lake antique shop there and uh, see Carla and uh, get some more of the, in the Navy because I emptied out Pam there at the uh, Sweet Designs there in Greenville and she's a great lady by the way uh, check her out and she does just like what I do and she's pretty talented and her and Martha and Deb there have their own stop man great ladies they're the ones that uh, Deb actually gave me the gold paint that I did some of the ornate pieces and Pam even gave me what she had left of her own in the navy blue for me. And how many people do that, huh? But uh, I'm always making pieces or making molds so I can pour. Like this is a poured piece. And I poured, as you know, at the fiberglass resin. But uh, I picked the left and the right of these up yesterday at Boswick Lake. And I picked up this Would You Bend. Because you can see... This is in a lot of antique pieces, and you heat this up with your heat gun, and well, I just snapped that piece off, but let me get it up here so you can see it. But you heat this up with your heat gun, and you can kind of take it where you want. What I'm going to do is uh, make some pour trays and make some three-foot molds so I can pour this out of fiberglass resin anytime I want to make pieces, and then I can cut them to length, because that little roll right there is 18 bucks. So you get into stuff like this, this is like $25. The big ones that I made, like this is one I poured yesterday. Because this is going to match, this is going to go on the headboard. And that matches the big ones that I put to break up some of the blue on the dressers. And you, you're talking $35, $40 a pop for applics. So I'm always making them and of course I'm always pouring molds and... I have my own mold collection going on here. And these are all molds of 
stuff that I like, stuff I did, some that I bought, and, uh, and here I'm always making extra pieces, so I always have extra resin in there, so I'm always pouring. I got a ton of little ones already done in here. I want to cancel it and some roses and stuff already actually even done and painted in there. So mold wise goes, but even use water-based chalk paint and I use my uh, HVLP, high volume, low pressure paint gun. That is what I sprayed all the blue with. So yes, there's no brush strokes or anything. This is the first time I've done that. It's pretty cool. But as you can see from the inside of my mask, even using water-based paint, still wear your mask. You don't want that in your lungs. Don't want any in your lungs. Handles, because as you can see, these are flipped. Most all the drawer pulls on this, not all, but most, are these. These are paint in the Watusi to paint and clear. And no matter which way I try to flip and stuff, you can always tell and see. So I come up with this rigging here. And I hang on a couple of hooks there, just some strings. So that way I can hang them upside down from one of the, the bolts that screw into the back. And that allows me to uh, spray the and get everywhere so I get a nice even texture I guess you could say in color and concept as far as that goes um, just another one of them little tricks that I do and you know me I just try to spread things along and so learn from some of my mistakes and talking about uh, mistakes well I needed to pour another one of these big ones I shared my boo-boos with you too. I needed to pour another one of these big ones for this headboard. Now, when you pour those, sometimes it gets out of the mold a little over the top. And I bring them over here to my belt sander. And I'll fire this puppy up. And you put them back on it. It gives you a nice flat surface. And it also cleans them right up. But I slip. And as you can see with my finger, yeah, that's what happens when your finger hits the belt sander. Other thing that happens is you go outsy blankety blank blank and you let go of it and it hits the back and as you can see it busted it up so now yesterday I said now I gotta pour another one well when you're mad and you're not thinking and I wasn't thinking and uh, I was mad and I forgot to put hardener in the freaking resin so then I had to get all that out of there and then turn around and uh, just get lacquer thinner out and clean out my big mold so I can pour the one that you see that is done now. Yes, mistakes happen. Um, one heads up, and I learned this one off of other folks' uh, YouTube too. If you do decide to use a sprayer, and uh, I did my clear coat last night also with the HVLP gun. Um, you can spray the uh, polycrylic, but uh, as they say, it dries fast because it's waterborne and it dries really quick. And if you don't get it out of your gun, and I mean out of your gun, inside cleaned out and all, pretty much immediately when you're finished, uh, your gun's going to pretty much be toast because it's just going to harden up right inside your gun. So uh, it's like I did not, I, I took heat and uh, I kept. Uh, warm uh, bucket of soapy water here so as soon as I was done I got her all cleaned out there right? so I see a text just came across the screen and the little lady says breakfast is on the table so I hope everybody has a great Sunday peace out <laughs>